Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 1.1. We're going to introduce whole numbers. And our two objectives in this section are to be able to read and write whole numbers and to be able to round numbers to different place values. So before we start, we're going to do a little bit of review. And the first is to identify our digits. Our digits are 0 through 9, and the values in between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All these digits, there are 10 digits. And they fall into different uh, classifications. And the first one is our natural numbers, which is also called our counting numbers. And those are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to put a series of ellipses. These three dots just identify that this would continue. Of course, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, all the way on through infinity. So those are our counting numbers. Now, our whole numbers are the same as our natural numbers, except they include the value of 0. And again, I'll use ellipses to indicate that this continues on. So, when we look at these two counting numbers, it doesn't include 0, because if we had no items to count, we're not counting anything. So it doesn't include 0. But when it comes to whole numbers, 0 is a quantity. I can have nothing of something. So that's one example. Uh, know your natural numbers and your whole numbers. They're the same, other than the fact that whole numbers include the value 0. The next thing we're going to look at is an application to reading and writing of values. And maybe we write a check. Here, I'm going to write a check to you, the student, uh, and for the reason of math class. And we have this quantity here. This is a number in standard form, where we use the digits to show the number. We have 1,239,476. And we notice that our standard form, we have these commas in here. Generally, for any number greater than 1,000, we use these commas as a, an accounting purpose. Now, <clears throat> each three digits is defined as a period. It's good to know the terminology, but don't focus too much on it. So each three digits is a period. We use a comma to separate it. So it's easier to define the number, what place values we have. So we have the number in standard form. When we write a check, we also have to put it in to English language to write it out. So we have 1 million, and we have that same comma here, 239, oh, I forgot, 1,000. Let me write that in there, 1,000, because we have to indicate the place value. 239 is in the thousandths period. 476. Now we'll reread that. 1,239,476. This English word or words describes this number in standard form. So let's take a look at this number. Again, this number is written in standard form. Because it's greater than 1,000, we're going to put in our period markers of our commas. Now, when we have our places, we want to sometimes define those places. So if I were to ask you, what is the place value of the number 3 or the digit 3 in this number in standard form, you'd say, well, this is the 1s, the 10s, the 100s, the 1000s, the 10,000s. So the 3 is in the 10,000s place of our number. All right, let's go over here. And we take a look at this number. We have 7,649. And we notice that comma there. If we want to translate this English language to standard form, and the reason why we call it standard form is because it's the easiest method to write. And it's what most people do. We have 7 in the thousands. And I use my comma there. It's not necessary because this value is not greater than 1,000. But we're going to have 7,600. 49. So we're able to convert a word from the English language to standard form, 7,649. What if we wanted to go the other way? What if we had 278 and we wanted to write that in the English language? This is going to be your example. This is your opportunity to pause the video, try this yourself, write this number out in the English language, and then try to go the other way. Take this number, 523, and write it in standard form. 
All right, <clears throat> let's look at rounding. If I were to ask you to round the number 873, that wouldn't really make sense because I haven't identified what place I want you to round it to. So <clears throat> when we want to round a number, we have to identify what place values. Do I want to round it to the tens? Do I want to round it to the 100s or the hundreds? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a number line to represent this value. If I were to put this value on the number line, well, I look at my number line, and it only has tick marks that are separated by tens, 800, 810, all the way to 900. So I want to estimate where would this number fall on this number line. Well, since it only has ticks of 10, I want to round this to the tens place. So if I'm going to round it to the tens place, I have to look at the value to the right. The value to the right is what we use to round our number. So if I want to round to the tens, I look at this number. If this number is less than 5, I round the number off or round it down. So it's approximately 870. This number is close to 870. I round it down. So if I go over here, I could say it's about right there, 870. Actually, because I know I rounded it, it'd be a little bit to the right on this particular number line. Now, what if I were to round it to the hundreds, this value right here? I have to look to the right, and the value is 7, a value greater than or equal to 5. So this tells me I'm going to round the value up. So if I'm rounding to the hundreds in this example, I'm going to round it to 900. And if we look at our number line and my original uh, placement of that estimate, I can see on the number line that it's closer to 900 than it is to 800. So that's why we would round it to 900 in this example. All right, I want you to try for yourself to round 448. Round it to the tenths place. I underline the tenths. And then I want you to round 24,872. Round it to the hundredths place. So try these on your own, and good luck. Thank you.